Today we're going to be talking about graphing quadratic functions. And the standard form of a quadratic function is given here. And make sure you write that down. A quadratic function, the graph of a quadratic function looks like a U. And the lowest point or the highest point would be the vertex. And then our quadratic functions are symmetric across our axis of symmetry. So meaning the distance from this point to my axis of symmetry is the same as from the axis of symmetry over to this point over here. So that's going to be super important to us. The axis of symmetry is a line and we find that line by finding the opposite of B over 2A. Now the vertex. Since the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex is the same as the axis of symmetry, you have negative b over 2a, and then you evaluate the function, or you find the function value at that x value. The y-intercept, remember, is when we make x 0. So if you make x 0, that term would go to 0, that term would go to 0, so our x-intercept is always the value of c. Now, your opening, we open up if a is greater than 0, and we open down if a is less than 0. And the vertex is a max value meaning this point right here is the highest point on our function if, now think about it, if you open down this vertex is going to be the highest point so we have a max value if a is less than zero and we're going to have a minimum value or the y coordinate is going to be the smallest point if a is greater than zero, if we open up. Okay, maximum and minimum value. As I just said, you don't have to rewrite this down. But what I want you guys to keep in mind is that the minimum or the maximum value is the y value at that point. Okay, it's the y number. So, it's not just the ordered pair, it's the y number. So again, we have a maximum if we open down. We have a minimum if we open up. Okay, consider that function. We're going to find our vertex, axis of symmetry, y-intercept, and then tell me how it opens and all this fun stuff. Okay, so our axis of symmetry. First, find the axis of symmetry. Remember, we find the axis of symmetry by doing negative b over 2a. So the opposite of b is 4 over 2 times 2, which that's going to simplify to 1. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 1, and I'm going to want that written as a line. So we draw that line in. Now the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex is the same as the axis of symmetry. Then I need to find f of 1. So I plug in 1 wherever I get an x, and we have 2 minus 4 plus 5, so that's going to equal 3. So our vertex is the point 1, 3. So you put your vertex down. Now the y-intercept, make x 0, meaning that term goes away, that term goes away, so our x-intercept is 5. Put that point down. Plot that point. Now your axis is, you're symmetric. So 
from my x axis symmetry, my y intercept is one unit away. So I'm going to go one unit in the opposite direction so that I know what another point on my graph is. That's going to give me an idea of how wide or narrow our function is. And then we sketch in our function. We open up because a was greater than zero. Our vertex, that's a minimum value of three, smallest value of three. The domain, all real numbers. Because in terms of our function, I can plug in negatives, I can plug in positives, it doesn't matter. Now the range, there's a reason that I've been highlighting that the vertex is a max or a min. So it is a minimum, meaning that that's the smallest y value. So our range is y greater than or equal to 3 because this is the smallest y value. Or that's my smallest y value and it's everything greater. Another example, again, x is a symmetry, x equals negative b over 2a, which is going to equal a negative 1. So again, I want that as the equation of a line, x equals negative 1. That also tells me the x-coordinate of the vertex. So then I find f of negative 1. So I have a negative of a negative 1 squared minus a 2 times a negative 1 plus a 3. That's going to simplify to negative 1 plus 2 plus 3. So my vertex is negative 1, 4. So I put down negative 1, 4. We have our axis of symmetry that tells me that I'm symmetric across this line. Now let's find our y-intercept. That's the last value, that's c, so that's 3. I plot that point. Now my y-intercept is one unit away from my axis of symmetry to the right. So I go along that same y-value I go one to the left now to get my symmetry point. We open down because a is a negative one, so that's less than zero. So our graph looks something like that. Now the vertex is a max, and the value of that is four. That's the highest point. So our domain is always all real numbers because I can plug in positives and negatives. Now the range, since the range, since their vertex was a max, all our y values are less than or equal to that max value. Our next example. We want to find the maximum or minimum value, then state the domain and range. So, this function, this function right here, since a is negative, we open down. So our vertex is a max. Now I need to find that value. Remember, I need to find the coordinates of my vertex. How I get the x-coordinate, negative b over 2a. So negative 2 over 2 times by negative 3. And that value is 1 third. Now I need to find f of 1 third because I need to find the value, and that's the y coordinate. So I have negative 3 times 1 third squared plus 2 times 1 third minus 4. So I have negative 3 
times one ninth plus two thirds minus four. So I have a negative one third plus a two thirds minus a four. So that's going to be one third minus four. One third minus, well, four is 12 thirds. So my value is negative 11 thirds. Vertex a max value of negative 11 thirds. State the domain and range. Domain is all real numbers. The range. Since the vertex is a max, that's the highest y value, our y values are less than or equal to negative 11 thirds. Okay, our next example. And please make sure you have this written in your notes. A souvenir shop sells about 200 coffee mugs each month for $6 each. The shop owner estimates that for each 50 cent increase in price, he will sell about 10 fewer coffee mugs per month. How much should the owner charge for each mug in order to maximize the monthly income? So X. This is going to stand for the number of price increases. So, remember that I want to find the monthly income. Our income is the number of products times by the price for each product. Okay, so this is going to be some function of x. So the number of products. So it says he will sell 10 fewer coffee mugs per month for every 50 cents he increases. So he right now sells 200. We're going to take away from that 10 per 50 cent price increase. So that's why that's 200 minus 10x. What he has right now minus, because we're he's it's 10 fewer, 10 times the amount of price increases. So that's the amount of products. Now the price, the price right now it's $6 plus, because we're adding, we're increasing our price by 50 cents. So I'm increasing my price by 50 cents times the number of price increases he decides to take. So when you multiply this all out, okay, so remember X is the number of price increases. I need to know how much should the owner charge for each mug? So if I find the vertex of this function, if I find the vertex, the x is going to be the number of price increases that I need to take to find the maximum because our vertex is the highest point. So I do my negative b over 2a. a is negative 5. That simplifies to be 4. So I need to take 4 price increases. But make sure you're answering the question. I need to know how much should the owner charge. So I need to look at this price piece. I know that my maximum is 4 price increases. But I need to plug in here the price expression to figure out what the actual price is going to be. So 6 times, or 6 plus, 1 half times 4, that's going to be $8.
is what he has to charge. Now, what is the maximum monthly income? The monthly income the owner can expect. Or monthly income, basically I know what X is, I need to find P of 4. So we have 200 minus 10 times 4. Now we did, we've already found this price part. We found that price part in part A. So if I multiply that by 8, our maximum monthly income is $1,280. Okay, there are your lesson questions. Please make sure those are submitted on time.